and look at that mist on top. I'm not going to get very many views today. Perhaps ought to have gone higher yesterday. But I didn't have an awful lot of time after I'd got here and set up. Did six mile yesterday, but uh, more lower. I'm a little bit warm at the minute, but I know from past experience, once you get on the top of Kinder, especially when it's in mist like that, it's going to be cooler, windier, and uh, wetter. The guys in front of me, some of them are in jeans. So we're approaching Williams Clough. I have my winter boots on because my summer boots got wet yesterday because even though they're Gore-Tex they don't stand a chance in staying dry if you go over the top of the boot in water crossing the river and it was that warm yesterday it didn't matter if I got my feet wet and if it meant an extra longer walk to cross the river it was just wade across, just for the easiest. So this is day two, if I haven't already said. Let's go get through this gate. I've not got my hood up, uh, even though it is raining, because it's too hot. And I won't be taking many photos with um, my phone today because I'm frightened of getting it wet through. So we'll see what we get. By the looks of it, most of the men that we've been following are going up Williams Clough just because that's where I was going and just because Flynn is not very keen on them. So you might have to stay on the lead, eh, Flynnie? Before you go in, dog. Hey, if you don't really like to swim, do you? You can swim, but you don't really like to swim. Right, better go put my camera away because we're going this way. directions. It's very difficult when you've got a dog that don't like men and it's men that's asking for directions. Uh, so if you see them men up there, they're supposed to be on the Pennine Way and they come down Williams Clough by mistake. So they've got to walk all the way back up and shit we've got a dog coming. 
and it's a big dog as well. Oh no, this is why I shouldn't bring Flynn. Well, this passing of dogs and people, very time consuming. We won't be doing 22 miles today. Keep having to stop and wait for people to pass and to save distance for Flinny. And he still, he still barks. He's normally at his safe distance. He's normally all right, but he's not when we're hiking. Everything is a threat, I think. Right. Find this path. Looks a bit slippy over there. Wish I'd got four legs like uh, Flinny. Well, we've reached the path of Williams Club. And we're heading across to Blake Low. And we can't see a thing. There's the Pennine Way over there, going back up to Sandy Hayes. Wind's got up. There's the sign. Tall Edale. That's away. I can't see a thing. that I was uh, looking for. Hey, Flinny. What are you doing digging? Go the mouse. Go eat things. wreckage as I was uh, looking for. inside it to eat my sandwiches. But it does not seem to be improving one little bit. I am having to shout into the back of this camera so you're about to hear me. way across the moors
then you've got to stay on. It's all got little lambs. We don't want you upsetting the little lambies. Stop being sheep poo. We're heading over there. That would be a nice little boggy. A bit boggy. We've got um, super water boot boots on today. That's just my light. Boots. Uh, this should be alright. Oh no, let's see if there's any sheep fucking There's a sheep behind us. Don't want to go down this. We went around the outside. Go down it. I think there's only sheep for a bit, so there's plenty of safe oh, there's some over there. As long as they're not close, we're fine. Tonight. Not in the caravan with me. No. Been in the camper van. You're not sleeping in the camper van, are you? I have got your coat just in case you got really wet, but you've got the same undercoat as Badger. I can see it. Your top coat's wet, which revealing your fluffy undercoat, it never gets wet that does, not it? You're like a husky. wet and misty, the mist suddenly really coming in and so we've cut across and uh, we're heading for home. The clouds just blown away a little bit and that's where we're supposed to be going and then back down Sandy Hayes and decided we're just going to go back down uh, and give us a the easiest so we to walk all the way up there to walk down San Diego because we're supposed to be coming in from a different uh, direction um, to come back and um, coming down San Diego. But and I wouldn't have had to walk up this big hill. So it seems silly walking on that when I can just go across there and go down Williams Clough. There's Kinder Rose in the distance. You can see it on the GoPro. I can see quite clear the clouds and um, part of it. The wind's really got up. So I'm having to put the house right up to the back of the GoPro, uh, the Osmo, so you can hear me. The Osmo cuts a lot of the wind noise out, so it won't, you won't get the wind. But um, in doing that, it reduces the volume. So that means I have to put my mouth right up to the camera, otherwise you get no talking. Ten mile walk. Hey. 
Or a climb. And scrambling all over everywhere, aren't you? Hey. Well, we just got back in time. Look at that. Slinging it down. Well, all them that was just going up with tents, uh, I can't think um, what his name is. I oh, it's John. From um, Backpack and Bruises Herd. Might not be John. All you, all you that uh, know um, the Backpack and Bruises Herd group, the one that smokes the e-cigarette all the time. I can't really remember what his name is. Anyway, seeing him, he was sat on the wall. He was just about to, to go up. And there was about a group of four or five carrying that much stuff. The, when they got to the bridge where we're in Clough is, uh, and they got across there, they haven't stopped for a rest. They got that much stuff. And not even on just on the backs. There was... Um, carrying chairs and plastic bags full of food and this is why people leave things when when they finish camping because they don't want to cart it all back because they cart far too much gear anyway I'm going to go and give the dog some food and get these uh, waterproofs off and make myself a cup of tea well disaster struck I'm waiting for my husband to come and rescue me I broke the back door of the camper van. I broke the lock. Door won't shut. <laughs> and he's throwing it down the rain and I can't get the door to shut. Oh dear. Well, it's it's as shut as it's going to shut. And I've managed to bungee it up a little bit, but you can see, still see daylight um, out of it from in here. So it's not shut properly. Ah, Mark's going to go mad when he gets here. Well, he's going mad already. I didn't do it on purpose. I was rushing because it was slinging it down with rain. And I hadn't got one door properly shut before I shut the other one. And it's made a right mess of the lock. <laughs> so, so now we're going to get home if we can't get the door to shut. That's going to be good, isn't it? Hmm. So, a bit of a disaster to the end of the weekend. Oh, well, never mind. Won't be going walking tomorrow. Um, I might be going home today if Mark can get it uh, sorted enough for me to travel. Oh dear, never mind. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. Finish on a disaster, eh? Um... I'm stressed up with um, Flinny as well. He's not been a very good boy today. He's barked at everybody. He's been a right nuisance. So now he's fast asleep in his cage. He's not. I've not heard a peep out of him for the last half an hour. Because 10 mile up um, them mountains and across them moors. Oh, he's heard me. He's suddenly, he's suddenly moved enough to say, I'm not asleep, Mum. <laughs> And he's not coming in here because he's absolutely caked in mud and wet through. He's wrapped in a towel. Um, and I've put him um, one of those mats that like soak all, all the water up for him to lay on. But he's not coming in here till he's dry. I might send him home with Mark. <laughs> That's how mad I am at him. Because he can't behave himself. He just has to blooming make life so complicated. Can't walk past. He walked past a couple, an old lady, to well, a couple, elderly, um, and I says he'll bark at you, and he walked straight past them and they bark. I can't believe it. Only people he's not barked at all day. And they says, "Oh, he's gorgeous. Look at that beautiful face. He's not been a naughty boy." And I'm thinking, oh, "You want to have him?" Anyway, this is the end. Of the weekend filming I am not filming anymore because I'm in a mood it's my own fault I should never have brought Flinny with me and then I wouldn't have been messing about in the boot in the rain would I no 
all Finn's fault. Blame it on the dog. My rescuer, my knight in shining armour, come to rescue me. You're pain in the arse. <laughs> Hour and a half drive, and it took me three minutes with the pry bar after looking at it, or less, to fix the bloody thing. Well, I had no tools. Really, really lucky he didn't knacker the lock mechanism. He just bent it out of shape. Not my fault. So you shoot one door, and then you shoot the other door. You yeah, no. Them both together next time. Stress, slinging it down the rain and... Cup of tea and a bag of crisps. <laughs> and I've got to drive home another hour and a half. Stupid dog. Thanks. I'm doing him. It could have been worse. You could have been a lot worse. Um, I'm doing him a panini lot. I could have been out somewhere. To thank him for it. coming all the way to rescue me. I've even bought you a few drawl of gaffer tapes. If you do it again, you can just gaffer tape with a bloody door shut. <laughs> <laughs> that would ruin my paintwork. Well, I've had a nice drive out into the countryside in the rain, nearly, nearly been driven off the road by two idiots, one overtaking the other one, coming up to a bend as I come round it. Oh. Maybe you need to change my underpants. Oh dear. <clears throat> come on. She's making me a panini. i tell you what, you said this place was out of the way, you weren't joking. <laughs> you get down into Hayfield Village and you're going, it can't be up there. Yeah, there's a sign saying <laughs> Caravan and Camping Club, it got to be up there. 